Hello friends, this video on force and pressure part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us talk about the next contact force and that is friction. So what is friction? It is a force that opposes motion. Now what do we mean by that? In opposes means something which tries to prevent motion. What is motion? Motion is all about movement. So when an object is moving, we say that the object is in motion. Now if there is a force which is trying to stop the movement of that object, that force is called friction. So let me give you an example. Let us suppose you have a toy car. So as you push the car, when you push the car, what happens? The car starts moving and after a while it stops. Now why the car stops? Because you did not stop it by uh, putting your hand or something. You just gave it some force because of which it started moving but it came to a stop on its own. So it stopped on its own due to friction because there was a frictional force between the surface so this is the surface on which the car is moving and the wheels of the car. So due to this frictional force, the frictional force is trying to oppose motion. It is trying to slow down the movement. And finally, when uh, the frictional force could finally dominate, then it stopped the motion completely. Let's look at another example. Have you ever been to the children's play area and there you would have seen these kind of swings? Now what happens when you sit on the swing and if somebody is pushing you from behind? So if this guy, so here you can see this boy is pushing you from behind. Now once he applies some force, so you keep swinging for some time and then you come to rest on your own. I mean even if, if he is not applying any further force to make you move. So why do you stop? That's again because of the frictional force of air. So air is, there is some kind of friction between air and the swing and as a result over a period of time it comes to rest. So this type of force which opposes motion is called friction or frictional force. So again you take an example of uh, a person who is uh, sailing a boat or who is on the boat. So in the boat also there is a lot of friction and in order to overcome the friction a person continuously need to sail the boat. So you see here why do you why do we try to make this move in this direction so that it pushes the water backwards and the ship can move or ship or the boat can move forward. That's because there is continuously a frictional force which is trying to stop the boat from moving. So if we want to overcome the frictional force, some extra amount of force needs to be applied and that is why it is required to sail the boat. So now we will see why how friction is a contact force. So let us see how friction is a contact force. So I have already defined contact force where I said that when the objects are in contact with each other. So those objects which are exerting force on one another. So here frictional force arises due to contact between surfaces. Now let us look at some of the examples so that it becomes easier for you to understand. Like here you, what did you see? So if you look at it once again, you see that when you apply a force to the ball, the ball starts moving. So the ball changes its state of motion. From rest, it starts to move. But after a while, it stops on its own. Now this happens only if the ball is moving over a rough surface. But in, if the same ball is moving over a slippery smooth surface, in that case the boy, ball might continue to move for a longer period of time. But if the surface is rough, after some time the ball stops on its own. So what stopped the motion? Because we did not stop the ball, we did not apply any external force to stop it. But there was a force which existed between the surface and the ball. So the ball was in contact with the surface and due to this contact, because of this contact arose the frictional force and this frictional force opposes motion. That means it, opposes, it, it acts in a direction opposite to the direction of applied force. So we applied force in this direction. So frictional force acts in this direction and therefore after some time the ball finally stops moving. Now you can think of other examples. For example, if you rub your hands together, 
So what happens when you rub your hands together friction it is due to friction that heat gets generated. Now in this case also if you see both the objects that is both your palms are in contact with each other. While you are walking on the uh, road, walking on the ground, you are able to walk because of the force of friction. If friction is not there, in that case, you are, you are, you will not be able to walk. You will slip on, over the ground. For example, when you step over a, a banana peel, what happens? You tend to slip. That's because it is very slippery. If you look at the skin of banana, it is very slippery and therefore the frictional force is very less between your feet and the banana peel. Therefore, you, the friction is less and therefore you tend to fall. So we are able to walk, we are able to run because of the presence of frictional force. So frictional force exists due to contact between surfaces and therefore it is a contact force. So let us look at a simple example which will tell you how exactly frictional force is associated with applied force. Now let us suppose we apply a force on this ball so that the ball starts to move. So let us say that the applied force, the force which we apply that is denoted by capital F and let us suppose that we have applied a force of 10 Newton. So these are just examples. Okay. Now, after some time, the ball stopped. Why did it stop? Now, so here you see F, capital F is being applied in this direction and therefore the ball moved in this direction. But after some time, the ball stopped because force of friction acted in opposite direction to the motion. That means it acted in this direction. Let us denote frictional force by small f. Now, let us suppose that the frictional force is, let us say, 4 newtons. So, 4 newtons of frictional force is acting on the ball all the time. So, therefore, what would be the net force acting on the ball? So, the net force would be equal to capital F minus small f, that is 6 newtons. So, that means friction. Now, whenever the frictional force becomes equal to the applied force, that means the ball will stop moving any further. Now, as long as capital F is greater than small f, the ball will continue to move. Now, as soon as capital F will be equal to small f, the ball will not will stop moving. And when the frictional force becomes more, then the ball might even start moving backward. So, I mean, this is how the concept of friction works. So, friction always uh, is always acts in a direction opposite to the direction of motion, opposite to the direction of applied force. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.